All right, what are we talking about? So, um, I know you sent me some questions and I immediately dismissed them because they were all about synthetic biology. <laughs> so we'll try to avoid that subject. Okay. Or incorporate it differently. Okay. Um, so every question that I ask, if you could like repeat the question within your answer, just because I have to You're not mic'd and... On it. So. Don't, you, can't, don't you have a mixing board? You can't dub that in? <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, the first question is just, um, you can tell me your name. And your position uh, within JBA. Okay, uh, I'm Clem Fortman. I'm a postdoctoral researcher with, within JBA, within the fuel synthesis group of JBA. Honestly? Honestly. Honestly, I first came in looking to work on Crohn's disease because my wife has Crohn's disease. Um, and then, so there's some potential link between Crohn's disease and mycobacteria paratuberculosis, which is a, a bovine pathogen. Um, and then I got more interested in tuberculosis because it affects two billion people on this planet. It's, I mean, it's the number one bacterial killer in the world. Um, and when I was starting my program in microbiology at Minnesota, I went to the head of the department and asked, who can I work with? I want to work with tuberculosis. And he said, well, nobody works with tuberculosis. But this guy, David Sherman, works with streptomyces, which are uh, physiologically related. So it's sort of, sort of the same class of organism. They're, they're pretty far apart, but they're both they're, cl they're as close as I could get in that scenario. So I started working with him, and he does a lot of stuff on secondary metabolite biosynthesis. And I started studying that, and it just, it just sort of clicked for me. And I started doing this, this sort of work, building small molecules and bacteria. So at some point, I would like to combine that and go back and look at cures for tuberculosis, take my whole background and wrap it up and, and head back. Or Crohn's disease for that matter, although I'm no longer as convinced about the linkage between mycobacterium paratuberculosis and, and Crohn's disease. But it, it may still be there, it just is hard, very hard to prove. So that's, that's how I got into this monkey business. So I take metabolic pathways. What, what I do at JBay, sorry, what I do at JBay is to take secondary metabolism, um, take the pathways, some in whole and in part, and try to uh, put them together in, in a way that will make them produce something that'll burn. Um, you know, that's sort of the the end goal of JBay is the production of fuels for internal combustion engines. At least this this phase of JBay. I mean, if we go on and, and engine technology changes, I'm sure we can adapt the chemistry in. But right now we're looking, essentially looking for things that burn um, hydrocarbons with a few oxygens and hopefully high, high quantity output and, um, you know, combustion properties where they're not kicking out toxic chemicals at the end. So there are a lot of things to look at. There are a lot of options. Um, a number of pathways build hydrocarbons, and we're just we're exploring most of them. It's all right. Did that just that no, just went off? I, uh, all right. Yeah. Um. I think. 
the question is, Yes. Well, it go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm I'm going to try to keep myself out of trouble here and but none of this will be will use any of that you permission but we're trying to wonder if you don't want to So the, so the, 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 the difference uh, so synthetic biology uh, is really focused on putting together lots of plug and play parts that are context independent. When we, uh, as we develop these fuels, we're going to uh, assay them for the combustion properties and probably choose one, two, uh, actually we'll probably choose a couple gas and a couple diesel replacements and really hammer those to increase their production and output from whatever we choose as the platform host. Um, but because we get something to work on those systems, doesn't mean it's going to work on other systems. I mean, a lot of Jay's fundamental background in isoprenoids that have led to the huge increase in what he can get for uh, amorphodiene production for artemisinin, you know, downstream artemisinin production, will likely translate into anything that we pull out of that same pathway, out of the isoprenoid pathway, but there's no guarantee that, it, that they will. I mean, it's Synthetic biology sort of well, the biology is a little bit context dependent, yeah, as uh, and we I, we don't currently know enough about the context to to pin down every parameter and get things to work in a plug and play manner. I think I think the potential is there that we can get some systems where we have a pretty good idea of what the context is and, and perturbing the system will have a predictable effect. But um, in JBay, we're, we're going to get some targets and we're going to hammer on those targets. Um, and anything that comes out that's plug and play is great. Anything that adds to the synthetic biology or the underlying, um, the, the fundamental information that will ultimately allow us to define the context of biology in E. coli or biology in Saccharomyces, that's great. But I think that, that the synthetic biology aspect is secondary to producing the fuel. he says is hopefully has some legs I mean it's it's only a matter of time before a computer is going to be able to predict everything that goes on in E. coli that amount of time may be glacial but um, it's uh, I think it'll come sorry 